so much for still being with us on Thursday's edition of Morning at NTV as we continue on with the 25th. We have to look at the other side of things that have to support the economy of our country. I am Priscilla Regina Naloga. Welcome to our Tech Note. Now in our Tech Note this morning, we're going to be focusing on the investment climate and the opportunities that be before us in 2024, especially for us in Uganda and the efforts to fortify <coughs> private markets. The backbone of it being that the Dutch East India Company, established in the 17th century, is often considered as the precursor when it comes to modern corporations marking the beginning of institutional investments. However, formalized investment research gained momentum in the 20th century with the advent of stock exchanges and the increasing complexity with financial markets. Morning at NTV is extending a hand of discussion to be a beacon for those interested in unlocking opportunities in alternative investments as well as gaining deeper insights when it comes to private markets here in Uganda. And to set the pace for us, we are joined by Mr. David Ivan Wangolo, who is the Chief Financial Analyst as well as Investment Director with Pal Capital Partners. Good morning to you, Mr. Wangolo. Good morning, Priscilla. It's My a pleasure friends. to have you. Thank you. Let's first start by understanding from where you are seated and your experience what the investment climate looks like for us in Uganda. I think the investment climate in Uganda and East Africa in general uh, is facing a bit of turbulence and this turbulence has been brought on largely by capital flowing out uh, or flowing back to where it has usually come from which is foreign foreign capital uh, with the challenges of interest rates and inflation happening globally and also you know tax revenues really going down for our governments who have been really the front runners of investment therefore we are looking at opportunities at how private capital can be now brought into the space mm -hmm. to formally plug the gap uh, for where investment has, is now really, really falling short and, and leading to, you know, collapse of business or collapse of economies uh, that, that we are seeing in the East Africa region and Uganda specifically, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, all right. Uh, investment opportunities in Uganda, I know that they are numerous and they are ready for people to jump on to, especially local and foreign investors. And uh, in uh, post-COVID-19, what do those look like? Which are the opportunities? Where are the windows and the doors? So what we're seeing is there is a bit of opportunity to invest in corporate, corporate enterprises, you know, from the SME, from the SME side of things. And foreign and private capital is being encouraged to now boost those investments because that will create the jobs and that will create the aggregate demand required to boost the economy to go forward. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to speak to sectors, that is, of course, quite broad uh, because all sectors are open really for investment in Uganda. We're having a huge gap of investment capital coming in. And therefore, as the conference, as the alternative investment conference, we are saying that we should catalyze private local capital or institutional private capital to start to look at alternative investments beyond the traditional investments that they look at. We know that the problem is institutional investors uh, in Uganda largely are buying treasury bills and bonds mm -hmm. and, and all their capital is allocated there. But that then crowds out uh, the private sector from accessing that capital. And this is the issue we're saying. There are alternatives beyond the traditional asset classes or the main asset classes that have been promoted for risk mitigation and, and return. And then it begs the question to educate our audience, what are the present alternative uh, you know, elements of investment that we can look at? So from an institutional perspective, I think we need to broaden and deepen our knowledge on assets such as real estate, infrastructure, uh, we need to broaden our knowledge on private equity and venture capital where a lot of change is happening on a regulatory level and legislative level in terms of starting to domicile private equity funds and venture capital funds locally in Uganda. That can be used to leverage on foreign capital coming in if the private players can put the, the initial you know, shilling forward. That then encourages foreign, foreign players to say, well, that seems to be an area that we can invest since the locals believe in it. And the regulation is such that we need to uh, be competitive uh, in terms of the efficiency of capital allocation. And what does, what does that mean? It means that when capital is allocated, it shouldn't be taxed. Uh, when capital is allo allocated, it, it should be allowed to work for longer periods of time, such that then it can transform business. Uh, when capital is then moving out of country, it shouldn't be exorbitantly taxed on its exit, such that then foreigners have the interest to actually stay longer rather than exit, exit the country. And also when capital is formally registered, then it gets out from the murky waters and comes into the public domain 
where other players can participate and, 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 and perform in an institutional environment. Okay. Yeah. While that is the ideal picture, Mr. Wangolo, <laughs> the reality on the ground is that these investors that we're trying to speak to this morning are faced with challenges, especially the local investor. There's the high taxation, the policy hiccups, the weaknesses uh, here and there in the system that are hurting the kind of diversity that you are advocating for. Mm -hmm. It begs the question, how do we make Uganda the focal point of such investments and their own alternatives uh, when you have uh, especially a foreign investor who has the option of looking elsewhere to a better uh, accommodating market than Uganda. So for the local investors what we are saying is and, and this is together with the capital markets authority so for vehicles such as private equity or venture capital that invest in corporate corporate securities in a private space we are saying that the capital markets authority should recognize this capital and if recognized there should be tax advantages for that kind of capital then we take capital out from dark areas into the light. Mm -hmm. Now for the foreign investors we are saying that we as Ugandans must invest in our country fast. So the institutional investors, the pension funds, the fund managers must put capital locally fast before we start to attract the foreign capital. As I mentioned in the beginning that there's a global challenge to capital movement and capital is moving away from the uh, peripheries where you know Uganda lies mm -hmm. back to the center where it feels safe. Now to get it back into uh, Uganda and, and not in the treasury bills or government securities but in the private space we need to create vehicles that are formally regulated recognized by our authorities the regulators capital markets authority the, the registration bureau and then that capital can then be deployed into the economy in an efficient way mm -hmm. yeah okay so I know that you are having an upcoming conference the second edition of its yes. kind let's first get back to the first edition and what was it focusing on and those focal points have they been achieved in any way so the first edition was initially to introduce, uh, you know, the alternative asset asset class, and we feel that we attained, you know, policy policy guys in the room, we attained regulators in the room, and we had investors and potential, you know, deals in the room. So that then brought the effort together, the collaborative effort together. Now, with that collaborative effort, we want to now take it into actionable steps. What does that mean for institutional investors? Institutional investors that have been traditionally deploying capital in the government securities, what else exists and how can we tap into those assets? So we are bringing the regulators to come and offer you know, the comfort that now we recognize alternative assets such as private equity and venture capital, mm -hmm. and you can actually place capital in these assets and attract foreign capital in efficient vehicles that are competitive, as in jurisdictions such as Mauritius, where that capital tends to domicile. We are also saying that there are vehicles such as real estate and infrastructure where institutional investors in the pension sectors can actually deploy capital rather than just deploying all the money into the government securities and their managers coming into the room to present you know, their, their value propositions to allow that capital move into those assets on a long-term basis. Okay, and so the second one, what are the details of that conference? Who are you attracting in particular and when is it going to be happening? So the details, the main, the main actors in that conference will be, of course, investors who are interested in, in, in investing, but we are focusing on the local capital pools. And what's pools. the investment portfolio you're looking at? So we're looking at a broad portfolio for, and as an institutional investor, you look at a broad portfolio. You'd want to look at securities, whether those are public or private. You'd want to look at real estate. You'd want to look at infrastructure. So we are bringing in the investors to look at a broader portfolio mm -hmm. of assets. And we are emphasizing that it should be local investors. We must emphasize local formation of capital to be able to attract foreign capital at attractive rates. But we also must provide the breadth of assets that they can invest in and ask the regulation to conform or you know, change to the direction that we need to broaden the asset allocation. Mm -hmm. And so that is for the investors. Then for those uh, managers who are providing these assets, we're also bringing those into the room to explain and deepen the knowledge about these assets and how they can be registered you know, in the local context uh, in favorable jurisdictions that also continue to attract uh, foreign capital here. We're also looking at the regulators because we can't do this without the regulators to be in the room to offer the comfort that they do understand uh, these assets and there will not be you know, confusion or misalignment of purpose. Mm -hmm. We're also inviting the policy uh, people, especially at the Ministry uh, of Finance, uh, to just also understand and give guidance in the you know, uh, understanding of where investment is going, where capital is coming from in a private nature and how do we treat it you know, from a tax point of view 
and from a recognition point of view. Okay. Uh, one of the things that you have continually in mentioned as far as investments is called the alternatives is real estate. So I want to look at the growing real estate sector for us here in Uganda and there are many investment opportunities that are available, especially for commercial as well as of course uh, private residential buildings here and there. It begs the question, what are the strategies that are available for you to capture value for private equity? So what are the strategies we are trying to promote at the Alternative Investment Conference? Now, institutional investors, especially in the pension side, are not actively pursuing those assets. Right. These assets are being pursued in dark pools of capital or pools of capital that we don't know about or pools of capital that we're not aware about. And that tends to bring challenges, mm -hmm. especially for regulators and the government to understand who are these people and what are they Those doing. Because yes. yeah. Real yeah. estate Ex is laundering. Exactly. It, it appears, <laughs> to, it appears to, to offer be. opportunities exactly. for those kinds of things. Yes. So the conference is trying to provide or spot a light yeah. on that asset, but also make pension and regulated uh, pools of capital mm -hmm. to look at that asset in, in a brighter light. Mm. That way, if we marry the two, uh, real estate and public or capital that is recognized and regulated, we shall then elevate uh, our real estate sector to stop looking as though you know, it is, it's one of the areas for, for dark capital to an area for, for brighter capital. And certainly will lead to better you know, price discovery for for real estate assets. Well, looking forward to the reality of that. Let's talk about exploring investment best practices in Uganda and why those particular ones in this time. So as the CFA uh, Institute, uh, for which the CFA Society is affiliated, we, we, we attract members whose uh, you know, values are, are around ethics, particularly and diligence in, in, in capital management. And of course, the members of the CFA Society of East Africa you know, include those who have the CFA designation as investment professionals, those pursuing that designation to be chartered financial analysts, and other members who like to associate with the values of ethics and diligence in investment management. Mm -hmm. We believe that if we continue to champion investment professionals in this space, then we, we have our clients or we have our public, you know, reaching out for proper and concrete investment advice that is driven by ethical conduct and diligence uh, in the management of client funds. Okay, there's another sector that uh, we believe also has potential in that regard, and that's the tourism sector. Uh, in regards to investments, is that a consideration with the alternatives that you did mention earlier? Yes, uh, I mean the tourism sector certainly comes in as, a, as, a, as, a, as an important sector for, for the growth of the Ugandan economy, and through private equity and venture capital uh, you know, vehicles, uh, we can deploy capital you know, in tourism assets. Uh, and grow the sector in a private sector, in a private sector space. So certainly the alternative of private equity and venture capital offers an opportunity for tourism and other sectors in Uganda mm -hmm. to access, you know, private capital for growth. Okay. There is another event that you are equally holding in this regard. Yes. So we are promoting uh, this as an investment week. So on June 12th, we shall be having the Alternative Investment Conference that has been uh, organized and, and is being promoted by the CFA Society of East Africa mm -hmm. alongside the Private Sector Foundation, uh, Uganda. In the same breath, during the same week, we shall have the East Africa Venture Capital Association uh, doing the annual, the eighth annual uh, conference in Uganda. So moving away from the uh, Kenya market to, to the Uganda, Uganda, which is a good plus yeah. uh, for our market. And they'll be hosting this uh, on the 13th, on the, on the following day, uh, you know, just to strengthen the discussion around investments and opportunities and bring in different players to understand our market a little better and also meet our local players, mm -hmm. which enhances our skills, uh, our knowledge and our ability to actually network you know, in a wider East Africa environment. Okay. And then at the end of the day, we still also, you mentioned skills and knowledge, and those are definitely gaps that need to be bridged. How are you enabling that bridging? So the CFA Society is largely advocacy and education. So it, it, it promotes that. And, and we are saying we are training people as proper investment uh, you know, uh, advisors into this space and, and recognizing them as members of the CFA Society of East Africa. So that is a badge of recognition of uh, you know, knowledge, that this is a person with knowledge, this is a person with skill, and this is the person who should be entrusted uh, with investment funds. That's one. Two, we are meeting out with regulators as the CFA Society of East Africa to educate them uh, on, on the different asset classes mm -hmm. uh, that exist such that they can create the right and relevant regulation for this market that remains competitive uh, in, in regard to attracting capital uh, from foreign players. 
Further to that, we are also working closely with policy, especially at the Ministry of Finance. And in that regard, uh, we collaborate in advocacy in areas where we feel uh, that capital allocation uh, is inefficient and can be made more efficient by government policy, especially around taxation. Okay. Yes. In closing, um, how does one individual or on an organizational level actually set themselves up uh, to tap into these opportunities? So we shall be hosting the conference, as I said, on the 12th of June, and we encourage individuals to participate uh, in the conference. Uh, there will be open you know, uh, registration on the conference. On the QuickNet platform, uh, they can search for AIC 2024, or the CFA Society of East Africa website. Uh, they can actually register to attend the conference. And indeed, we would like to also profile the fact that, you know, what are you coming you know, to attend, are you, are you a scholar, are you an investor, are you just, uh, you know, an observer? That will help us, you know, understand and curate uh, the events, you know, around the themes uh, that most of the attendees are, 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 are requesting uh, to listen to. Uh, we shall, of course, have our own themes around policy, around capital, local capital formation, around regulation, around, uh, you know, green financing, gender lens, fina gender lens financing, climate financing. Uh, innovation, technology, and things such as AI that are coming. But those just present the, the global opportunity of themes that are available in the, in the mass media. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to make that as specific as possible to potential people coming for the conference through registration. Okay, all yes. right. Thank you so much, David Ivan Wangolo, who is a Chief Financial Analyst as well as Investment Director with Pal Capital Partners. He has alluded to us the opportunities, the alternatives that are, are there, away from, you know, <laughs> what you have been used to on the daily bread, which is uh, unit trusts, uh, treasury bonds and bills here and there. There's other ways you can actually get that money to work for you. It's called working smart. That brings us to the end of this discussion. We return with yet another discussion. Do you stay with us? <laughs>